Kodak is continuing its transition towards a web portal that is content-centered, data-driven, and provides personalized user experiences that are supplemented with efficient search and discovery capabilities. The first phase of the web portal revitalization that you see before you was released a couple of months ago and focused on a simplified, modernized design with several improvements towards a content, data-driven user experience. This tutorial focuses on the second phase of the web portal revitalization that involves improving the dataset search and data discovery. This involves integration of NASA's Common Metadata Repository, or CMR. For those of you unfamiliar with what CMR is, it's a high-performance, high-quality, continuously evolving metadata system that catalogs all data and service metadata records for NASA's Earth Observing System. So CMR integration can now be seen through Podax web portal through dataset search and discovery. So we've now had improvements in the free text search box that you can get to throughout the entire web portal, but also the faceted search and filtering through find data and the information that's displayed on the dataset landing pages. So what I want to do now is actually take you through these changes so that you can start exploring and playing with a new web portal. So pretend I clicked on find data. I clicked find data, it popped up with this page. So on the left hand side is the new Podak dataset search and discovery that's enabled with CMR integration. And on the right hand side is the previous Podak dataset search and discovery that was enabled with Solar. So looking at the two, you should see that it has the same look and feel, most of the same elements. Uh, if you were like me, I come in to find data, I use the facets on the left to actually drill down to find a data set that I want to use for my science analysis. So if we look at the facets, overall, there are some that are similar and we are, there are some that are currently missing. So talking first about the similarities. So there's processing level between the two. You can actually see with the CMR integration, there is actually a little bit more granularity in the processing level. So instead of just saying level one, we now have level one A, level one B, and perhaps some granularity with respect to level two might be coming down the road. There's also keywords. So this is a new facet. These are the science keywords from the Global Change Master Directory, or GCMD. There's platforms, instruments, and projects. These three um, are very similar to what we had in the past. Those that we are currently aware that are missing, and we're working with the CMR team to enable, include swath spatial sampling, spatial resolution, temporal resolution, latency, collections, and spatial coverage. As I mentioned, we are completely cognizant that we are missing some facets that you, the users, might have found extremely helpful for drilling down and finding the data set that's most applicable to your science application. We're working with CMR to incorporate that additional metadata and facets to provide a, a more similar look and feel to you, our users, as well as enhance your experience. Uh, that's not to say that it will be an apples to apples, it will be as close as it possibly can be to it. But overall, the CMR integration is a significant improvement over our previous data set search and discovery that was enabled with Sol. Other differences you might see between the two is in the previous version, we had a sort by box, which we do not have in the present version. That's because the CMR search results ranking is different than what we had with Solar. So that's not to say that we won't have it down the road, we just don't have it in this version. The other small differences that you might see is if you go to a particular data set landing pages. So if we click here on this near data set and we do the same for the previous, the differences that you're going to see, again, same look and feel, uh, but the this minor differences, for example, share this page used to be a box in which you could copy and paste. Now it's this nice embedded link, so you would just click on that and it does the same thing. Uh, we also used to have an additional tab called granule file listing, which we don't have. Again, this is just because right now CMR does not um, enable this, so that is why we do not have it. However, it'd be great to get input from you, the users, as to whether or not this is a feature that you substantially used and thus you would like us to bring it back and push up priorities. So if you have strong feelings about this granule file listing, please let us know. So other slight differences that you might see is actually in the information that's displayed. It's extremely minor. So I'll walk you through it for this particular data set. But if I didn't walk you through, I think if you came to this data set page 
you really would have no idea of the information that was missing because it's really there. It's pretty comprehensive overall with what they already provide in CMR. So if we go through this, you can see the same type of information is displayed thus far. The only things that are missing, they might have a little bit different with regards to verbiage. So here's north bounding coordinate, where before is northernmost latitude. Um, a thing that's missing here is particularly latency. Some of that projection information is missing. And what you'll see is we no longer have persistent ID. This was really an internal um, keyword, let's say, that was used by Podak. We would really like you, the users, and what we're using is the DOI. So that's why that is that has gone away. So overall, for the second phase of the web portal revitalization, the major improvement was this integration of CMR to enhance our data set search and discovery. But there were some other bells and whistles that we implemented along the way based upon your great user feedback um, for other aspects of the web portal. And I'm going to take you through those now. So if we went to the data providers page, so if you want resources, data providers, this is what would pop up. And this is the previous page. So as you can see, we now have this handy dandy dynamic filtering capability. We had it previously for the data users and we still have it for data users. We've just now enabled it for data providers, as you can see. We've also enabled this dynamic filtering capability for resources on every single mission page. So if we go to Cygnus, which is one of our current missions, current satellite missions, and you scroll down to the resources accordion, I'll do that for both. You can see again, previous, there was no filtering, new version filtering. So you can envision as these missions continue, because um, at NASA we build things to occur for a long time, there'll be more and more resources um, posted. So as a user myself, if there's a way for me to filter out what particular content I'm looking for, I find that extremely helpful. So other things that have changed or been improved upon is if you go to citation metrics for this particular data set, and we'll line them up. Uh, you can see that the content's the same, but now we provide the DOI URL and the data set short name as links. So you can click on this directly, get to that paper publication, you can click on this data set and learn more about it. So if we do that now, we click on this. So for this particular data set, we find out that it is retired. So this is what would previously be displayed if you had that DOI URL. It would say this data set's retired, provide you with some basic information. Now we tell you the data set's retired. It's been superseded by another version. Here's the link to go to it. Start using this in your science analysis, as well as providing either through this tab or this one, um, the data set provenance or history. So for that particular paper publication, you're using this version 2.0, but since then there has been a 2.1 and there are in fact two versions that came before it. So this is not applicable for all our data sets at Podak, clearly. This is for the ones that have been retired and have been superseded. So some, some new things to sort of play with on the web portal. But overall, the main improvement for this second phase of the web portal was CMR integration with these minor sort of enhancements along the way based upon your feedback. So please continue to provide us with that feedback. Go on the web portal, play with the facets, tell us about your experience, and you can do that through either emailing us directly. For those of you that are not on our mailing list, you can go to help and join by clicking this mailing list, or if you want to talk to us through our forum, you can click on this forum link and you can post questions or comments or feedback through that as well. So we greatly look forward to receiving your input because clearly it's you, the users, that make Podak what we have in front of us thus far and continuously allows us to improve and better your user experience. So thank you all.